starting with hydration. That's, that's most important. Okay guys, hi. Uh, I don't really do long form videos all that often. If you are following me already, you know I do a lot of the shorts on here and I do a lot of TikTok, but I have gotten so many questions over the years of the lazy town lore and how was I Stephanie if you guys remember a different Stephanie and what's a pilot and I kind of just want to go over everything in this video. So I'm just I'm gonna talk and then I'm gonna have a lot of editing to do. I had to had to wear pink in honor of Stephanie. <laughs> My name's Shelby, and if you don't know, I was the first original American Stephanie from Lazy Town. So, uh, let's start at the beginning. I was 10 years old, living in New York City, going on auditions for Broadway and some SVU, Law & Order SVU is like the only show that was in. <laughs> All the Law & Orders basically were the only shows you could audition for in New York. And one day uh, my agent sent my mom and I this audition for a new kids pilot called Lazy Town. Now a pilot, I feel like I need to add a little asterisk with the like ding, a pilot is sort of a test episode for a show. So the show didn't have a network behind it like Nickelodeon, Disney, Cartoon Network, those are networks. So this was an independent pilot and they were hoping to film this as a test to then show the networks and have one of them buy it. So I went in and I remember I walked into the room with the casting director and the first thing that happened was the casting director looked up from the storyboard because they had already had some like animated storyboards for the character and she was like, whoa, you, you look exactly like this character. Like it's your face. And I looked at it and I was 10. So from what I remember, I was kind of like, yeah, cool. <laughs> but we did a few scenes for the audition. I, it was so long ago, but I am trying to remember, I think I jumped rope in the audition. There was like something about jumping rope. And then we did part of Ziggy's birthday scene about the toothbrush. And then the casting director was still so just blown away by the fact that I looked that much like this animated drawing that I remember she walked out of the room with me to go talk to my mom, which is very rare and is always a good sign. So she comes out and she shows my mom the storyboard and she's like, your daughter looks just like this. And my mom's like, yeah, I saw the picture out here. I, it's kind of creepy, but we took that as a good sign and left and that was that. But a few weeks later, we got the call that not only was I skipping the callback process, which a callback is what it sounds like. They bring you back in sometimes to read the same material, but this time in front of the director and the producers. But they wanted to take me straight to a screen test. So a screen test is where they'll try on the costume. They'll have another actor there sometimes that you get to play off of. It's a, it's a further along step in the process of booking a lead role. So we were pumped, right? So I go in go to do the screen test where they put me in a mock-up of the wig and the outfit. It wasn't anything that was like the finalized versions, but they also wanted to do kind of this makeup test where they wanted to see how I was at 10 years old at sitting still in a makeup chair, because that was gonna be a really important process. Originally, when I had this screen test, Stephanie had some prosthetics. So they wanted my face to look a little bit more cartoony. They added um, some like fake cheeks and um, eyelashes and I forget everything else that they did in that first little screen test, but I guess I was a good little kid and sat still and let them mess around with my features. And then it was time to go onto this little green screen stage. And I remember meeting Magnus and he was very sweet because he was also directing the project. And we did some dialogue, but then he asked me to sing any song that I wanted to sing. And I chose Dancing Queen by ABBA. And I did not realize how much the Icelandic folk love ABBA. Is it ABBA or ABBA? So the room was just like, yeah! And I was just making up a little dance and doing little spins and I booked it. Shocker, right? This would be a very short video if I was like, and that was it. So I booked the project, which was so exciting. At this point in my career, I had never booked the big like lead role of anything yet. I'd done guest stars and a few theater projects, but that was, that was about it. So this was a big deal and I remember the first thing we had to do before we traveled to Iceland, because spoiler alert, the show filmed in Iceland, um, is that I needed to get a mold of my head made so that they could make a wig that fit me perfectly and looked like my real hair. So I went into this, <laughs> in my memory, it was a basement. I'm sure it wasn't as creepy, but I was a little freaked out. My mom was really freaked out, but I remember I went into this room, this white room, and they had to put, oh, 
they had to put Vaseline all over my like face and they slicked my hair back and it was so gross and honestly has given me texture issues. Like sometimes when I put on lotion after I wash my face, I'll get grossed out and I'm like, it's because of that day, I know it. But they had to do that because then they were gonna put plaster all over to make a mold of my head. And the only way I could breathe was they took two straws and stuck them up my nose and this little mouthpiece. And so I just had to keep giving thumbs up or a thumbs down if I couldn't breathe, but I was fine. My mom, I think was more scared than I was. I heard her just like panicking the whole time. And I was like, I'm good, I'm good. The mold is made. And then it is time to head to Iceland. So we flew to Iceland so that I could go start rehearsals and working on the pilot. And I remember when we flew in, it was just like barely snowing. And even though I had lived in New York at that time, I was spending most of my time still in Florida and I would kind of go to New York for auditions. So I hadn't really seen snow yet. And I was so excited. And my mom was freaking out about the Northern Lights, which I ended up thinking were the coolest thing ever. But we get there, we meet the rest of the cast and crew and everybody is so nice. They had a big welcome dinner the next day for us. My mom and I stayed at the cutest bed and breakfast the whole time that we were in Iceland. And I remember the breakfast was my favorite because I've always been like a smoked fish girl. And they had this like smoked salmon oh, and these soft boiled eggs. It was just, it was so good. The one thing that took getting used to when they warned us is the shower, it smelled like sulfur. It was all volcanic, you know? So that was interesting. It always smelled a little bit like rotten eggs in our room, but whatever, worth it. So the first thing, I'm trying to remember the correct order. This is all from, again, my 10 year old brain. And I honestly should have called my mom and asked her questions before I made this video, but hey, nope, we're winging it. First was costume fittings. They wanted to figure out what Stephanie was gonna wear exactly. And they had an idea of the dress already, right? Because it was an iconic look, but they just had a few different options of shoes and socks and curly shoelaces versus straight shoelaces. I think we went with curly shoelaces. Headband or no headband, accessories or none. And then padding on the dress, because again, they wanted her to be a little cartoony, so they just had to shape the dress differently. And it was really cool. We took a bunch of those promotional images. Then it was time to record the song. I got to go into a recording studio for my first time ever, which now looking back as a voice actor, it's so funny to me that that was, that was the moment. That was my first big in the booth moment. And it was to record a song as a lead character and a pilot like that. It's pretty cool. It was really cool. I went in, recorded Bing Bang. They were really happy with it. The next couple days, it was almost like a, not really boot camp, but it was like every day there was a different task. So then I had to learn the dance for the music video that we were filming. I went in, I learned the Bing Bang dance. And for me, that was harder than the song because I am not a natural dancer. That took some practice. And then after it was time to actually start shooting the show. Iceland was gorgeous, but for the next couple weeks, it was just really inside the studio is where I lived. And we filmed the pilot episode. We did uh, Ziggy's birthday. We did where uh, I'm trying to get Pixel to help us. I remember that a local news station came and recorded footage. My name is Shelby Young and I'm 10 years old and I am Stephanie, which in Icelandic, I believe it's Sola Stilva. And it was just a wild experience. Uh, Everyone spoke Icelandic and they were trying to communicate as best as possible. The makeup artist had a daughter who spoke English. She spent some of her time in California. So she became my friend and sort of translator on set, which was very helpful to have. But I also remember just how nice everyone was because one day it really started to snow while we were filming and they knew how excited I was to see snow and they stopped production so that I could go outside and play in the snow, which was, it was really special. It was really cool. And I just remember everyone being so kind. Like there was not a moment of anything but joy while I was working on this project. And then after spending so much time there, it was time to come home to New York. So there was still some work to be done on the pilot. So as you've seen, the pilot consisted of some storyboard characters, which is that animation that they were like, ah, this looks like you, this is trippy. And then the live action stuff we did. So we had to go voice over all of the animated stuff, which again, I didn't realize would be my stepping stone eventually into what my career is now with voiceover. But I went in, I recorded the rest of the Stephanie lines. For the pilot, they actually hired real kids to voice the other characters, except I think Ziggy was an adult woman. And I remember being like, wait, adults can play kids? And again, now looking back, I'm like, oh yeah, we do, we do indeed. And then it was a waiting game of waiting to see what happened with the pilot. I remember, I, I forget if it was, that same year or the beginning of next, but I was asked to perform a stage version of the show at a school in New Jersey. And it was for some investors or network executives to come watch it to see how 
kids interacted with Stephanie and the rest of Lazy Town. I remember being really nervous for that because it was kids that were kind of my own age. I was fine around adults, but other kids, you know, you get a little, you get a little nervous sometimes. We did this little stage show. I could not tell you what the material was. I feel like I probably sang Bing Bang, but it went well because the show was bought. The show was picked up. And then that unfortunately is where my story of Stephanie pretty much ends. So now the question that I get the most is why did I only do the pilot? I am part of a union, a Screen Actors Guild is what it's called. And when you're in a union, you're not supposed to do non-union work. And the show, the, the pilot was union, but because the show was gonna be filming in a different country, there were all these different things that happened to make them decide to go non-union with the show. And they did ask me to stay on. I was their Stephanie. And unfortunately, I don't remember a lot of the intricacies of it because I was, again, I was like 10, 11 at this point. But my team and I decided, unfortunately, to walk away. And I remember it being a really hard decision to make. But ultimately, they cast Juliana, who I think was such a perfect Stephanie. Like, I ended up watching some of the show just because I thought she was really entertaining and engaging and very talented. Could dance way better than I ever could and could actually, like, do the real splits. <laughs> she was a perfect Stephanie. And then Chloe, I've seen some clips of her work. I thought she killed it, too. I think she's super talented. And again, a great dancer. <laughs> they have that in common. But it was one of those things where it's hard to look back and feel anything other than just grateful for the experience. It was such a cool life experience and such a fun memory. And it almost feels like a dream because it happened so long ago. Uh, but I feel like everything worked out exactly how it was supposed to, honestly. But this is it. This is all I got for you. This is the big, the big lazy town video. So, uh, bing bang diggery gadong. Say those words before you go to sleep. Is that really how I'm going to end this? Yeah, I think so.